So what I'm going to do is make a pattern stock out of this lefty, but there's a few things I need to do to it first. I want to make the forearm thicker, I want to make this thinner, I need to move this over to the other side. What I need to do is take this cheek piece and transfer the image over to the other side. So all I'm going to do is use a piece of paper and drop it right on that little line that I just scribed. So now that I've cut out my template, all I need to do is flip it over to the other side to reproduce that same contour on the left hand side. But that tells me where to put my Bondo. Right now I'm going to mask off this line right here so I can get my rough, my rough spacing. I'm trying to do this left handed for y'all's benefit so you can actually see what's going on. Nothing I hate worse than watching a YouTuber put his frickin' knuckles in front of the camera and you can't see what's going on. And then I peel my tape up while it's still wet. So what I'm doing is looking for daylight between the ruler and the wood and I'm marking high spots. So those are the areas I need to take down still. The other side is cured so we're going to go ahead and put another coat on. Of course this being a lefty rifle stock the slot is on the left hand side. I need it over here, so I'm going to grind this out with a rat tail file, get it nice and rough, and throw some Bondo in there too. What I don't want to do is get it inside, so I'm just going to tape this up kind of haphazardly here. Yeah, none of that's going to matter on the inside anyway. That's what she's supposed to look like right there. So this part right here is a uh, pretty important visual feature for the rifle. So what I want to do is make sure that I get it nice and coated with plenty of material in there. This is my third batch for this particular area.
So I made a little uh, piece of scrap wood form with a round over on it. That's the profile I want to put on the, uh, the comb. Pretty close. Remember these? All the way back in what? Uh, I don't know, part four? Flawless. So what that does is put my bolt in the right position to make a mark on the stock on either side to start making that, uh, that slot for the bolt. Clearance clearance. Now would be a good time to uh, mark out that location for the Nosler style bolt release that I just made. Good. Probably going to slope that down. That'll work. One other modification I need to make is fill in that hole. I'm building an ADL stock, not a BDL stock. I'm going to go a step further, get some tape on there. Then I'm going to pour a little bit more epoxy on the inside and let it fall right on top of that tape. Now you're probably wondering why I'm using this old trigger guard to uh, notch that out. I'm going to use the one I made on the custom stock that I'm going to create. So I'm just getting this as a true representation of the factory dimensions. One thing about Bondo, it sure is dusty. I'm getting this stuff everywhere. So what I'm going to do now is put two wooden dowels on here, bring this up about a quarter inch. Because uh, when I put the receiver and the scope in the little pocket here, it uh, it's a little low for me. So what I'm going to do is raise that up. And that was the moment I got super glue in my eyeball. Where are your safety glasses? So this is at uh, 5 16 I put this at 3 16 because I wanted to taper down just a little bit to make this transition a lot easier. I think if I left it up that extra eighth inch over here it, it may look odd so I'm going to kind of slope it down. That'll help me during the recoil anyway where all the mass is back here and not hitting me in the cheek. More Bondo! Alright, so the idea here, build it up, let it cure, sand it down, and when I reach those little wooden pegs, I'm done. Let's 
so just creating a flat spot right here so I can reference that downwards on both sides all right so our first critical dimension that we have to watch out for is to make sure that when our bolt comes out it's not going to hit the wood that's pretty good right about there so I'm going to go ahead and leave it knowing this is a pattern it's not really that critical but still that's less I have to do when I get the finished product done All right. that looks nice I'm happy with that So just by taking off, oh, not even an eighth of an inch, I can already tell that this is, uh, it's going to be a much better fitting grip for my hand. So here's the original profile of the, the curvature of the grip area. Here's the difference. All I did was take off an eighth inch and it gives it more of a curved surface. I have an idea that I want to put a custom metal base plate on here and I want that angled out a little bit. More to come on that. That's how they do it. Find my center, which is going to be inch and five eighths, so that's uh, half and five sixteenths. Go out a half inch. My dowels are 5 sixteenths of an inch, so um, if you didn't catch that, I found the center, went out a half inch there, went out a half inch there. That's where my dowel centers are going to go. So the basic profile that I want starting at the tip is more of a bench rest style front end, but I want to go a little bit hunting too. I don't want to make it so heavy that I don't want to carry it. So um, I'm going to start off with a basic profile here, sand at the shape, and go from there. You happy with that? Come on, get in there. I didn't drill you that crooked. That did it. That'll work. So off camera what I did is I just flattened this surface right here to make it true with the rest of it. I got some bond to fill in here. So I'll feather it back to right around where the uh, check ring ends. So similar to those dowels that I did on the comb over here, I'm using the pine as an initial shape to 
start my profile. All I have to do is sand onto the wood and then stop and then feather it out that way. Hopefully you can kind of see what I'm uh, aiming towards here. Making this a lot wider up, up front, keeping my barrel channel in the center of course, but I'm basically feathering it down to zero right here where the magazine well starts. So now all I'm going to do is round this over and uh, call it done. And it'll be, uh, it'll be ready to duplicate. That'll do. So I made a palm swell for my hand with some saran wrap and a spare bit of Bondo. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it there or not. Ain't quite sure if I like it or not. But there it is. Let it sit, we'll work on it tomorrow. I worked this down from about half its original height. It uh, still fits my hand, it locates it where it needs to be, which is the uh, main purpose of it. The forehand, yeah, it's basically like your, uh, your tactical shape stock up front, and then you got your classic Monte Carlo in the back. So the purpose of that cheek rest is to get my eye right in front of that scope each and every single time. I can't believe I almost forgot this part. This is the notch, oh, about three inch long on the side of the stock where the ejection port is. Mix up a quick batch and throw it on there. But before that, I want to fit this other side, get that marked out and contoured. And we'll mark off the side. These stock maker screws are so convenient. This stuff is a pain to work with when it's cold out. Good enough. We'll sand that down once it's cured. I won't put that part on camera. Uh, you guys get the idea. So there it is. The stock pattern is done. We're going to take this, put it in a duplication machine right next to a big old chunk of beautiful American walnut. I know this project is dragging out, but I, uh, I assure you we're getting things ready to, to come to the final product. So um, stay tuned. Subscribe. And uh, tell your friends about me too. Check out the rest of the videos on this series and uh, you'll see the whole picture come together. See you in the next one. Take it easy.